The little ninja, the hitting star in the 5 4 Padres win last night as San Diego has won the first two games of this series with the Philadelphia Phils. And tonight around baseball, we celebrate the great Hall of Famer Roberto Clemente and an award in his name for those who distinguish themselves on and off the baseball field. We welcome you to Petco Park. It's the third game of a four game series. The Padres entertaining the Philadelphia Phils. And good evening, everyone. Dick Hendrick with Mark Grant. Pleased that you're with us tonight. A San Diego born pitcher, Cole Hamels. He grew up rooting for the Padres over at Qualcomm. Cole Hamels on the mound. Now, there's a reason why this young left hander, he is young. He's only 30 years old. Has won 107 games at the big league level. He possesses so many things in his toolbox. He's got quite the arsenal. And when you use that arsenal against the Padres each and every time, yes, he has been in the driver's seat. Back on June 11th. Eight innings, five hits, no runs. Why? He could spot the fastball. He throws the changeup at any time, anywhere. He will throw a cutter into the righties as well. If you swing and miss, it's going to be a weak ground ball to the left side of the infield. Cole Hamels is that good. He's got the third best ERA since June 1st in Major League Baseball. He's really good. Eight and two against the Padres. A look at the Phil's past and present, but we're also going to look at the Padres' future. And that's the outfielder, 23 year old Reimer Liriano, showed his legs last night. There's a term in baseball he's raw, he's green, he's got a lot of growing to do at the big league level. But you know what? With the team, with the way the Padres have been going this year, it's nice to see Reimer Liriano against the Phillies last night. What did he do? He utilized some speed. You find a hole, you beat it out, and baseball instinct also comes into play as well. Jed Jerko smokes this one. You pick up the coach, you turn on the burners, and it's a good, hard, good old fashioned baseball slide. So, Reimer Liriano, yeah, he's been fun to watch. He's got some adjustments to probably make in the swing, but he's got a lot of a lot of room to grow at the big league level, and we're seeing it right before our eyes. His first three-hit night in the major leagues, Liriano, last night. Well, as we move forward, ladies and gentlemen, a salute to the Padres nominee for the Roberto Clemente Award, and he happens to be also last night's winning pitcher, right-hander Ian Kennedy, linked to the great Clemente when we return.
Mente Award for the Padres. It goes to a player who best represents the game on and off the field. And Ian Kennedy and his wife, Allison, have done a lot for military families here in San Diego. Allison's brother is in the Navy. And five times this year, they've hosted military families to the ballpark. They'll let them watch batting practice. They'll take them to the suite. I talked to Ian yesterday just about what the nomination mean, means to him. Something I've been able to do with uh, with being with the Padres, being with the Navy and Naval base is still here, that we've had to host the, just the servicemen and women and their families. Uh, really, that was what we're trying to cater to. And it's just an uh, honor to, to be able to be recognized for it. I don't do it for that recognition. So it was kind of, it was really cool and humbling to, to be honored and see I'm nominated for that. Major League Baseball will announce the national winner during the World Series. Well, coming up, last night, Alexia Marista just a triple shy of the cycle. It would have been the first one for the Padres. Hey, maybe Little Ninja can do it again tonight. We got game three between the Padres and the Phillies coming up on Fox Sports San Diego. <laughs> Eric Stoltz grabs the ball, kicks himself a toe hold, and we're about to play baseball. Game three of this four game series. The Padres hosting the Philadelphia Phillies. Placed here with us. 79 degrees, about 10 degrees cooler than last night. We have that little breeze. What a difference that makes. The last couple of nights, the flags hanging limp here at Petco Park. Here's the Phillies lineup brought to you by Mattress Discounters. Ben Revere to lead it off with. Michael Franco, a rookie, seeing him for the first time at third base. Chase Utley at second. Marlon Byrd will bat cleanup with Darren Ruff at first base. Dominic Brown homered last night in left. Carlos Ruiz, the veteran catcher, hit seventh. Freddie Galvez, the two run homer last evening, hits eighth. And then Cole Hamels. And on the mound for the Padres, left hander making his 30th start of the year, 34 year old Eric Stoltz. Scott, a report for Eric. As always, brought to you by our friends at Jaguar of San Diego. The fastball command early and expand the zone late. He can go up with the fastball, make him swing. He can throw that curveball, that changeup. If he's on his game, if he's got the crosshairs on the corners, Eric Stoltz should have a good night. And give him some run support. 15 starts this year, no runs or one run in his behalf as we check the Padres defense. Brought to you by the Aramco Group. 
Abraham Almonte gets a start in left field, feeling better that sore ankle. Cameron Maven in center and Liriano in right. Solarte and Amaris down the left side. Jerko and Medica at first base on the right side. And Rivera behind the plate, handling the offerings of Eric Stoltz, the 34-year-old Hoosier. Ben Revere, the center fielder, in the batter's box, and we're underway in San Diego. A fastball strike. Revere, the top Phillies hitter with a 306 mark. A lot of balls to the opposite field, and there's a ground ball foul past third. Solarte tossing that to a young fan. Ryan Sandberg, Hall of Fame skipper. Went to Cooperstown in 2005. He was the 1984 NL MVP, a 10 time All Star, nine gold gloves, seven silver sluggers. Yeah, came up as a Phil Farman and then traded to the Chicago Cubs. Fouled at the plate, two and, strengths. And had that Hall of Fame career on the north side. And many thought he would be the manager of the Cubs a couple of years ago. Didn't get the job and took a spot in the minor league system with the Phils as you look at the umpiring crew Adam Hamari behind the plate with Wolf Gorman and Rackley at the bases. Line to left field and Revere has a hit leading off this first inning. He, he might as well play him near that left field foul line. That's where he hits him. He just wears that out doesn't he? Especially a, a high pitch and get that top hand on top of it and send it on the line that way. Oh, two. 170 hits, Mark. Yeah, look at that pitch, Dick. That's yeah. up above the Phillies on the chest. Top hand, 0 2 pitch once again. Stoltz trying to elevate, but Revere's got such great bat control, he fights that one off. And a base dealer he is, 45 steals. Tops uh, with the Phillies and in the top three in the National League. Michael Franco. 22 year old from the Dominican Republic getting a start tonight. He's had only 31 major league advance. Was considered the top hitter in the minor league system for the Phils. So gets a chance to showcase his talents. Is he the third baseman of the future? Cody Ashey has started the first two games at third. He's got more power, but strikes out a lot. And when Players put up good numbers in the minor leagues. There's one common denominator as you take a look at the stolen base percentage for Ben Revere 87%. The guys in the minor, they love to hit the fastball. So, with that said, can he hit the big league off speed stuff? You know, he's going to see some off speed stuff tonight from Eric Stoltz. Two strikes to count. Chase Utley would be next. One and two, trying to get him to chase the fastball away. There's the veteran Utley. Same high school as Tony Quinn Sr., Long, Go Long Beach Poly. Struck him out on a changeup. One away to Utley. There's that big league off speed stuff. We talked about the fastball. Yeah, he likes to hit the fastball. Can he adjust to the changeup? Not there, he can't. Lutley checks in at 273. 11 home runs. One of six fills with 10 home, 10 home runs or more. Well, they've always had a lineup with power, including back uh, 2004, 10 years ago. They had nine players with 10 home runs or more. Down the field watching some batting practice before the game and Chase Utley. You talk about a guy with a plan even during batting practice. He took around, wore out left field. He took around, wore out right field. He took around and just tried to pepper that screen in front of the batting practice pitcher. It was fun to watch. That's why he's one of the top all stars in the National League. And Larry Boa, the bench coach for Ryan Sandberg, told me long ago, you know, there are players. Who come to win? There's Larry. There are players who come to win, right? Chase Utley expects to win. I like it. One strike to count. Fly ball on the infield. Amarista calling. Two away. And 
the cleanup hitter coming up right fielder Marlon Byrd. Everybody tries to play to win right. But do you expect to win. I mean when you go out on the field hey. We're not going to settle for anything. If we fall short. Hey, at least we gave it our best. But we should come to the ballpark every day and expect to win a game. That's how Larry Boa played. <laughs> Absolutely. He That's was, how he managed too. Yeah, right. He was mad when you didn't <laughs> win. No matter how well you might have played, if yeah. you got an L that night, he was not a happy camper. Bird, the leading home run hitter for the Phils this year, 25. Fouls that went away. But he also strikes out a lot, 173 times this season. Padres so far the first two games have really shackled the offense of this Philadelphia team. Total of seven hits in the two games. Cashner a two hitter with a one nothing shutout and the Phils only five hits last night. A couple of them were home runs. Seth Smith going over the hitters with the pitchers Ross and Kennedy. One and one. Thirtieth start of the season for Eric Stoltz. In the last eight games, seven times he's allowed three runs or less. So pitching solid ball of late. Revere a threat to go. Two outs. He's answered the bell, hasn't he, Eric Stoltz? Wow. First twenty-one starts, three and thirteen, but a solid four and three. Look at the ERA differential. Mm. There he goes, and he's got him picked off. Quick throw by Medic is over the head and all the way to the left field as he and now Al Monte has trouble, throws back to third, and Revere is safe there. Not only did Medica clear Amarista's head, but uh, or, or it was Jerko's head, he also uh, threw it past Amarista, finally out to Al Monte who had trouble picking up uh, hot potatoes. Well, on this move, the left-handed move, he's off and running, right? And Tommy tries to create a throwing lane by going inside the first base bag. And you know what? With the speed of Revere, he sees daylight. Watch Tommy as he gets the ball. See how he moves in towards home plate, trying to create a throwing lane, but just air mails it over Jed's head. No error, Medica. The error goes to Almonte. Swing and a miss, one and two to Bird. So if you're scoring a stolen base for Revere is 46 and then he goes to third on the error by left fielder Almonte. No error on Medica's throw although you would think so but that's just part of the stolen base for Revere. Up high tried to get him to go upstairs two and two. Part of the success of the Padres first two games of the series coming home where they played very well. Scoring first so we'll try to keep Revere from. Hitting home plate here in the first inning. Two and two. Curveball ball line to third. So it might have been a foul ball by the time it landed doesn't matter that's out number three and here come the Padres in the bottom of the first.
come up in the last of the first inning. Jan Solarte, and here's the Padres starting lineup brought to you by Toyota. Solarte and Almonte. Then Jetcherko hits third. Rene Rivera, the cleanup band. Tommy Medica bats fifth. Reimer Liriana slotted in the sixth position. Cameron Maben will hit seventh. Alexi Amarista, the hero last night, a single, double, and a two run homer, will bat eighth. And then Eric Stoltz against the classy left hander Cole Hamels. And the scouting report for the left hander commands both sides of the plate the changeup anytime, any situation. Fastball, cutter, curveball, changeup. He is a competitor. First pitch of fastball misses at 92 to Solarte. Hey, you can still get that fastball to about 95 at times, Dick, for Cole Hamels. Fly ball to right. Easing over into the gap is Marlon Bird, and ball carrying well again tonight. This hot, not so humid evening. One away. Phillies defense lines up this way with Brown in left, Revere in center, and Bird the right fielder. Franco at third, Galvis the shortstop. On the right side, Utley and Ruff. Ruiz behind the plate for Hamels. Almonte takes outside ball one. The deal that sent Chris to Northia up to Seattle. Almonte hitting 272 as a Padre in 29 games. One and one. Rancho Bernardo High School. Cole Hamels. Popped up right side. Utley, the second baseman. Second out. Hey, let's take a look at the keys to the game brought to you by the Honda dealers of San Diego County. Continue to roll at home. Another victory last night. It proves the Padres' home record to 42 and 31. And do some damage when Hamels. If in fact he does get on the ropes last night against AJ Burnett, you know, even though they won five to four, a couple times they had AJ Burnett on the ropes and they really didn't finish him off. Hopefully that happens tonight. You know, it will be a mighty task to beat Hamels. He's yeah. one of the best, and he certainly has pitched well against the Padres in his career. Line drive, jerk off. Heads up the gap, it's still rolling. That's going to go all the way to the wall. Jerko, no need to go for three. With one out, he might have taken a chance. A solid double screaming into the left center field. Padres have a chance here in the first inning. Jumping all over the fastball for his 16th double of the season. And with pitchers like Cole Hamels out there, Alonzo Powell said before the game, we have to try to get fastballs up in the zone. Hey, if it's the first pitch, it might be the only pitch you get during the at-bat. So go to Hackett. That's exactly what Jed did right there. So the two out double brings up Rene Rivera. Rene with 10 homers and 36 runs batted in. And he swings at the first pitch and nubs that one up the first baseline. Hamels this year, his record is deceiving. Eight and seven, pitch much better than that. You have to look at the ERA, 2.51. And the batting average against hitters at a 237 pace against this 30 year old southpaw. Oh, and two tied him up at 94. Interestingly, his record at home is three and two with a 3 2 9 ERA but he's 5 and 5 on the road ERA 1.80 Hamels. Well, talk about working the corners down and in and up and in. Again hits 94 on the radar gun. Shouldn't have any trouble staying loose or getting loose tonight. 74 percent humidity and Cole Hamels is used to pitching in that type of weather pitching on the East Coast. Philadelphia today the high was 75 low tonight 59. <laughs> One and two. 
Foul tip, strike three. And that's it for the Padres. They leave Jerko at second. No score after one. Uh, early in his career, you know, uh, but all the, you know, the hard time about Raz is, you know, being white, being black, uh, and he just, uh, you know, went through all those staff and, and make it to make it to the big league, and not only that, but uh, be the player that he was is something that uh, is amazing. Um, but uh, you know, then like I said, you know, the way he respects the game, plays ball, the way he plays the, the, the game, um, it's just something that you. That's just a sample. That's a guy you want to really looking for because you want to be like him. That was Jose Valentin talking about Roberto Clemente and just the impact that he had in Puerto Rico on baseball and Latin communities all over. I talked to Jose about the day and the award, and he said that he was actually nominated twice when he played for the Milwaukee Brewers, so someone that he obviously looked up to for a while. All right, Chris. Uh, so many did. Clemente was that five-tool player that played with such uh, energy, pizzazz. This was exciting no matter... If he was on the warning track throwing a guy out at home plate or running from first to third or hitting a game winning home run and Valentin knowing Clemente able to sing his praises. Boy, he was fun to watch. That was Darren Ruff a line shot but right to Maven in center field for the first out here in the second. Brings up Dominic Brown homer to right field last night is 10th of the season. You know what a lot of people tend to forget? Roberto Clemente was a Rule 5 draft off the Dodgers roster. That's right. By the Buccos. That's one of the all time. He rule was five a Dodger draft. farmhand now. Yeah, they sought him out and signed him and then thought they could uh, kind of hide him in the minor league yeah. system, but the Pirates knew about Clemente and pulled him out of the pond. Swing and a miss at a change. Two and two the count. Well, the rule five is a draft where, you know, back then you had certain players like Dick just mentioned where you try to hide, right? But there's scouts out there, and if they're not protected on the big league roster, you could take them. Strike three called, and Brown knew it. Second strikeout for Eric Stoltz. Well, let's peek into the hand of Eric Stoltz. He gets up on top, and look at that rotation. That's the old four seed fastball. And Dominic Brown. Takes that one right on the outside corner. Nice pitch by Eric Stoltz. He needs to be there to be successful. Here's the veteran catcher, Carlos Ruiz. Good all around receiver and hitter. A little below his average this year. He's battled some injury problems. That's a strike. Lifetime 274 hitter Ruiz. 
ninth year with the Phillies. Final back one and two. Well, he's right up on the plate. You look at Ruiz's back foot. His back foot actually looks like it's touching that inside chalk line. You see that back foot nearly in the back corner up on that plate. Yeah, his elbow, left elbow is over the inside corner. That means he likes to turn on fastballs in. Broken back ground ball to Amarista. And Amarista throws him out. A one, two, three inning for Eric Stone. Bottom of the second, Tommy Medica will lead it off for San Diego. Sports San Diego presents Padres Baseball, brought to you by Petco, the power of together, and by your San Diego Lexus dealer. Gas lamp district in the heart of our fine city. Just a couple of blocks that archway from Petco Park, where we see action in the bottom of the second inning. Tommy Medica, Primer Liriano, and Cameron Maben against the veteran Cole Handles. Swing and a miss off speed. They had Medica out in front. Talked to Tommy before the game and he thinks he's going to go play some winter ball. I'm not sure where, but big fan of Tommy Medica. Like to see him do well, hone his skills, and get some ABs during the offseason to be ready to go in 2015 for the Padres. Out of play. Medica's had his fair share of events this year 220 ABs. Eight home runs. I'd like to see him finish off strong. Good kid, and he's going with the undershirt tonight. Almost nicked the trousers, one and two. See, Hamels is good enough to where he can locate that pitch with a purpose in off the plate. Now he can counter with the fastball in again. He could throw the changeup down and away. Pitched against the Padres in Philadelphia back in June. Line drive, base hit. That's up the alley and left center trying to cut it off is Revere. Medica's going to gamble and go for two. No, he's going to put on the brakes and head back to first base. He was halfway to second base and Jose Valentin said, whoa, oh, oh, whoa, oh, oh, whoa, whoa, they're a big horse. Get back in here. That ball didn't have quite the oomph for the Jerko base hit, so it didn't roll up the gap. It came close. Well, nice job by Tommy Medica reacting to the fastball in. Hamels had him ahead. He bust the fastball in and then tried to double up. Good recognition. And being very aggressive around first. Hey, Tommy can run a little bit now. Sure does. 
He gets about halfway, puts on the brakes. Leadoff man on for the Padres here in the second inning. That brings up Reimer Liriano. Off speed. So Hamels has figured it out already that the Padres up there looking for first pitch fastball. He did that to Medica. Remember, first pitch changeup. Right. He does it again right here to Reimer Liriano. Liriano, 21 hits and 92 at bats, 228. Another changeup. What was, my, what, was my a strike yet. what was my scouting report? Anytime, anywhere, any situation, right? And there's the changeup again. Toying with the rookie on those first two pitches. Still hasn't thrown him a fastball. Just toying with him. He threw that change up down and away with a purpose. Medica with the leadoff single. We're in the second. No score. I guess a change up again. You're right. And it's two and two. Four straight change ups for Liriano. I saw Mark Davis throw 13 curveballs in a row. The points well taken in the minor leagues. You don't get many situations no. where that opposing pitcher throws you four changes in a row. Now what's coming? Fastball in, I'll bet. Strike three call. So he set him up and then fired that fastball on the inside corner. And Liriano unable to get the bat off the shoulder. Two strikeouts for Hamlin. Hamlin. And it's time now for a Saquon Casino Daycation statistic of the game. Third all time Philly strikeout master behind the lefty Steve Carlton and the Hall of Famer Robin Roberts. Cameron Maven, the center fielder of all the Padres, he's had the most success against Hamels. 10 for 29, four doubles and a triple. Off the breaking ball inside, two and zero. Oh. You know, I was just talking about that list of strikeouts. Boy, Cole Hamels must look at that list and say, "Boy, I'm on the heels of two Hall of Famers: Steve Carlton, Robin Roberts." Pretty good company yeah. there. Just keep those three together. What, I'm happy what, to have my name there. Yeah. Up the middle, base hit, Maven. So he still knows how to hit Cole Hamels. Low shot up the middle, and the Padres a couple of hits here in the second have a chance. Get on the board first. A hey, nice short, quick swing by Cameron Maven, and there's the fastball, and there's the fastball up, and Cameron plays a little pepper with Ben Revere. Love the ground ball to the center fielder. Alexi Amarista. Three for four last night, a single, a double, and that big two run home run that rallied the Padres from 3 2 down to a 4 3 lead in the sixth inning. Comes out swinging. He had it measured perfectly last night, Amarista, just long enough, 357 feet to the first row of the jack track. Just out of the reach of Sizemore. Well, that's where the New right field alignment moving the stands in paid off for Amarista. And the count goes two strikes. Amarista, the only left handed hitter in the lineup against the lefty Hamels. You know, Dick, you make a good point regarding the right field wall. You know, ever since they made that adjustment, I still think it's played fair. I do too. You know? I guess it made it that much easier. No, absolutely not. And it gives the outfielder a chance to climb the wall. Sizemore just didn't get there in yeah. time last night.
Medica and Maven aboard. Right under the letters, one and two. Another purpose pitch from Hamels. He's done that a few times tonight. Quickly head 0-2, fastball in. Wasn't that close, but Amarista's balance was forward, looking for something away. I don't know if that one was by design. I really didn't see where Ruiz was set up there. Was he set up inside? Did it look like? Kind of yeah. couldn't tell there. He was kind of over in the middle of the plate, yeah. letting Hamels decide. High breaking ball, strike three. Third strikeout. Some barking going on, but that was a bit high. Adam Hamari looking into the Padre dugout. Ruiz frames it. Yeah, it was a bit high. And it's up to Stoltz to help his own cause with two out and two on. Ball one. Eric with only four hits this year. It's under his production with a bat in the past. But lifetime, 177. Doesn't run, runs batted in. He has one RBI this season. Two and oh. Looked like the same pitch to Amarista right there, huh? And Stoltz is about three feet taller. <laughs> yeah, any pitch that's up around the letters of Amarista is about built high to the yeah. rest of the team. <laughs> he misses again. Three and oh. First three ball count. Well, the one on the left to Stoltz, the one to Amarista on the right. Pretty close, huh? Three and zero to Stoltz, and he takes ball four over the low, a four pitch walk. And the opposing pitcher, the bases are loaded. First walk given up by Hamels. Give Salardi a chance. This is one of the keys of the game, wasn't it? Get him on the ropes. Take advantage of it. Padre over every pillow. Medica, Maven, and Stoltz aboard. Salarte, career with the bases loaded, a 429 average. And Ben's in for a strike, a changeup. Bases loaded this year. He's had two opportunities with the Padres, and he's two for two. Fly to right field his first time. Well out of play down the right field side. Well, earlier today, day games, the Dodgers. Bombarded up at uh, Colorado 16 to 2. As the Rockies played a little more arena baseball. And then the Giants in the ninth inning, two at Arizona to win 4 to 2. So San Francisco back within two of the National League lead in the West. Up high, one and two. And the Giants have an off day tomorrow. They'll be here in San Diego opening the weekend series Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Bases full of Padres. One and two coming up to Salarte. Grounded foul. We get Salarte out in front. Boy, so many ways that Hamels can just toy with a hitter. I'm not just talking about Padre hitters. Hitters around the league, and that's why he's been so good after uh, the whole year, really, with the ERA that he's got. But since June 1st, third lowest ERA in the major leagues, he gets ahead quickly. He can toy with the fastball. He can throw you the curveball. He can throw you the changeup. Another foul. Again, not the fastball. It seems like in the short time, 
he's been ahead pretty much to every pottery hitter. The only exception, the pitcher Stoltz, exactly. Pitch walk. Right. That's puzzling. Stoltz there at first, Megan at second, Medica 90 feet away. Another foul, Solarde making Hamels work. Hey, pretty good seats. I smell, I smell the ball game out there one day. Do a ball game from out there with the fans. Go out there with the people. Be a nice spot to do it. You're looking right over the right fielder's shoulder. Up high. Good check swing, two and two. A series of off speed pitches, breaking balls, and change ups to Salarte. High ball, shallow and right, long run, but it's hit high, and over to make the catch is Marlon Bird. And the Padres come up empty. They leave three in the second. Still no score. Time now for the tools of the trade brought to you by Ram Trucks, the curveball. Yeah, we're going to talk about the old number two, Eric Stoltz. When he's got it working, working ahead, he can put the hitters in a defensive mode. The Dusa from Jesse Hahn, the youngster making a splash in the National League this year. And then Kevin Quackenbush probably threw one of the better curveballs that we've seen all year. That'll make you go quack, quack, quack all the way back to the dugout. The curveball, quite a weapon, a tool of the trade of any pitcher. I can remember back when some scientists said it's an optical illusion. Yeah. Uh, put a bat in your hand, doctor, and <laughs> exactly. get up there and see how much of a, an illusion it is. That's pretty good evidence right there that the ball does make a break. We got some Philly fanatics in the uh, stands here in San Diego tonight. Freddie Galvis hitting eight. Not much of an average, but he hit a big home run last night, a two run shot that gave the Phils a 3 2 lead. He was batting left handed last night, a switch hitter, hit it into the right field seats. Sir Reich, one and one. Well, with the Baltimore Orioles clinching the American League East. Good on uh, Nick Hundley, huh? Yeah. Nick Hundley's going to the playoffs. Of course, Houston Street uh, will be going with the Angels, too. So we have somebody to root for in the upcoming playoffs. Three and one. High pop up, right side, shallow and right. Liriano's ball, he's calling for it. 
One away. And time now for you to tweet your photo using hashtag SD fan photo. Chance to have it shown in our telecast brought to you by AT&T. Cole Hamels, the pitcher, steps up. Not a bad hitter. He has 10 hits this season. His career numbers 171 with a home run. Over but low. Looks like a hitter. And he certainly was in high school at Rancho Bernardo. Ground ball right side Jerko. Over to Medica. 4 3, and there's two gone here in the top of the third. See if Ben Revere takes extra time and the veteran move as Cole Hamels just grounds out 4 to 3. Give his pitcher a little bit of a blow as he walks back to the dugout. It's one of those things you learn, you know, through the years. You take care of your pitcher. Pretty much everybody understands that as well. He won't get right in the batter's box and kind of smooth out the dirt. Then he's going to step away and take maybe a practice swing. <laughs> get back in there. Are you ready? Yeah, he's now. Hamels uh, is in the dugout. Take a pitch, right? Yeah. Well, we'll see about that. He singled his first time. Yeah. Taken all away for a strike. He singled, stole second, and on an errant throw by Medica, the stolen base and second ball went out in the left field, and then Almonte had trouble picking it up. Revere went on to third on the left fielder's error. One and one. But Marlon Bird lined out to third to end the inning, no damage. Chopper to second. Underhand flip by Jerko, and it's a quick one, two, three inning for Eric Seltz. Middle of the third, no score. No score here in the bottom of the third. And we got a great photo for you we want to show you. Check this out. The pride of Rancho Bernardo High School. That is, well, number 19 there. Now number 35, Cole Hamels. Join us tomorrow on the broadcast for Throwback Thursdays. A chance to see childhood photos of Padres players and coaches. We got a ton of them. We want you to get join in in the fun as well. Pull out your scrapbook. Tweet us photos of yourself and your Padres gear for when you were a kid. Use the hashtag TBT Padres and watch Throwback Thursday tomorrow. Beginning with Padres Live at 530. And guys, I got a little sneak peek at some of the players' pictures because, well, I, you know, just went into the archives. And some great pictures of the guys. You got to love the ones where you can totally tell that mom cut their own hair. You know, would put that scotch tape there and cut it. <laughs> Great stuff. It's going to be a lot of fun tomorrow night. Don't forget, it's an hour earlier tomorrow night, our pregame show, 5.30 here on Fox Sports San Diego. And you notice something here, Dick? Number look 19. At the look at the change-up grip. Oh, yeah. He threw it in high school. He was successful. He's thrown it in the big leagues. And I he's love wearing that. Tony Gwynn's number. Yep. I love that.
He's a big Padre fan. That was uh, Cole Hamels at age 18. He was drafted out of high school by the Phils in the first round, the 17th player overall selected back in 2002. Belmonte bounces to the mound. This is Jerko doubled the first time. One and one the count. Needed 28 pitches to get out of the last inning. Hamels bases loaded. Salarte fly down. Up the middle playing him just right is Utley. Two away. So you mentioned Hamels was the number 17 pick. Right. 2002. 2002 you know who the Padres took number 13. Who? Khalil Green out of Clemson. Very popular choice oh, and man. fans loved him. I'll tell you what. We hope he's doing well. Absolutely. You know what I think about Khalil quite a bit. Hey there's a Khalil Green fan. Nice. And it, it, you make a good point Dick. We do wish him well. He i tell you what. He was one of the better shortstops at the top of his game when he was here. He he could produce offensively, make the great defensive plays. Man, would he say boo on Halloween? Oh, he was good. And the social depression and apparently out of baseball now. With really some good years left. Rivera struck out swinging the first time. And one and one. There's the off speed. So the, the moral of the story is learn to throw a change up. <laughs> <laughs> That's a recurring thing. We were talking about that last night. Huh? That for young pitchers don't fool around with the curves yeah. and the sliders that can really have impact on your elbow and your shoulder. Learn how to throw a change up. Every, every hitter says it's the toughest pitch to hit if you can throw the fastball. Yeah. So use that combo. Just ask Trevor Hoffman. Three and one now to Rivera. Yeah, he made a pretty nice living, didn't he, throwing that changeup? Yeah. Another off speed pitch, another changeup. Oh, the majority of the pitches seem to be non fastballs from Hamels tonight. Yeah, his secondary pitch, best pitch, is that changeup. Fastball location in and out, up and down, pull the string on the changeup. Might see another one here. Well, that. Next pitch will be his 50th. Should Rivera reach safely? Tommy Medica next. Got him again. Another off speed pitch. Strikeout number four for Hamels. Padres go in order in the third. Still scoreless in San Diego.
As we go to the fourth, and it's time for the San Diego fans of the game. Apparently, Philadelphia fans. <laughs> hey, that kid needs some floss. Hey. Most people are enjoying some social sparklers and some fish tacos later on. And the old Padre Brown. Oh, come on. Turn that frown up. There you go. <laughs> Big slow curveball from Eric Stoltz at 63 miles an hour for strike one. Michael Franco. One and one. Franco struck out his first time. Stoltz wheeling through this lineup has retired nine in a row. Pops him up. Shallow and right. Liriano up a couple of steps. Ten in a row. And time for the top tier player profile brought to you by Arco. Profiling Chase Utley, the all star second baseman of the Bills. Among active second basemen, number one in runs, number one in home runs, and second in hits, extra base hits, and RBIs to Robinson Cano. Quite a dossier. Chase Utley. Yeah, always been a tough out. But now time flies. First round, 15th overall back in 2000. Rolls that one to first. Just foul. Mm. That was close. Remember, it's not where the ball hits after the bag. It's if the ball goes over the bag. You know, I always like to do an experiment. Okay, watch where it hits before the bag. Yeah, it's yeah that's foul. Yeah, from my vantage point, it looked like it was farther down. I sit corrected. Well, if he had the rotating stands around there, you, you know, could get you a would, good view of that. Yeah, that's right. Can't wait for that. Swing and a miss at a changeup. Changeup curve. 67. Jimmy Rollins uh, out of the series with a hamstring. So the all star shortstop of the Phil's not in duty. So that's the combination right there. Rollins and Utley up the middle. Another one bounced up the first baseline foul. Yeah, the two of them have been the heart of that infield for over a decade. Kind of the Al Alan Trammell, Lou Whitaker with the Tigers have gone for such a long time. I mean, it, that really will make a franchise. They have two all star players in those key positions. Yeah. The Phillies have had it. Fastball outside, one and two. Well, Stoltz from Argos, Indiana, that's near Fort Wayne. In the news today, the Padres have signed on again with Fort Wayne as their Midwest League affiliate for two more years, the Tin Caps. Second baseman Jerko busy. Over to Medica, two away. Well, Eric Stoltz, yeah, he's been around the block. Chase Sumley's been around the block as well. So who is going to capitalize during this at-bat? There's the old curveball. There's another curveball. He's going soft on Chase Utley. Can't catch up to that fastball. That last pitch was probably the worst pitch he threw the at-bat. It was up, it was elevated, but just enough. And Utley tops it to the other second baseman tonight, as you mentioned, Dick, Jed Jerko. Two outs then to Marlon Bird, the home run hitting right fielder, and he takes a strike. There's that slow curve at 63. He's pulled that out of his bag tonight. He hadn't been using the slow, slow, slow curve on a handful of them tonight. Foul back, 0 and 2. You know that uh, Fort Wayne franchise this year, they attracted 411,000 fans. That's a good summer. It's a franchise record and it's the it's the hot franchise in that Midwest League. So the Padres have signed on again for two more years. So many of the players coming through Fort Wayne that we're watching in a big league uniform now. High often Stoltz with the count two strikes will throw that fastball out of the strike zone up. Change up inside. Again, tomorrow night, 5.30 for Fox Sports San Diego's 
live pregame show 610 for the first pitch an hour earlier than might be on your tickets. And then the Phils leave town and in come the Giants for the weekend. Expecting three big big crowds for that. But should go over the uh, two million mark tomorrow night. Popped up shallow and right again. Ariano right in position. Another one two three inning and Eric Stoltz has retired 12 in a row. In Phoenix, the Giants and the D-backs tie two in the ninth inning. Addison Reed gives up that base hit to Matt Duffy, the rookie called up in September. Two run score. Sandoval and there's Crawford and a 4-2 San Francisco win. So they're now two behind the Dodgers. The Dodgers were bombarded 16-2 in Colorado earlier today. And there are the standings heading toward the weekend. And remember the NLDS and the NLCS on Fox Sports 1. Don't miss it. Padres at that 70 win mark. Last of the fourth inning, Medica, Liriano, and Maven to face Cole Hamels. Hamels gives a lot of credit to Jamie Moyer now working in the TV booth for Philadelphia. For Moyer's book on hitters, encyclopedia, if you will, for Moyer. All the years that he pitched. Oh, yeah. And he shared it with Hamels. And now Hamels carrying on in that pattern to keep a notebook on the men you're going to face. One and one Domenico was single to left center his first time. Her ball bends high and away. Well, pitchers keep books on hitters, and I'm wondering if hitters keep. There's Jamie, 269 game winner with his son there on the right. One of his eight children, Rancho Santa Fe. I know you were going to Mark Sweeney. Did yeah. he keep a book on pitchers? Yeah. Mark Sweeney joins us by the Padre dugout. And Mark, good evening, guys. Ever, good evening, my friend. Did you ever keep uh, notes or were they just mental notes? Yeah, I think a lot of it was mental notes for me. I didn't want to overthink it too much, but I also had a plan against every reliever. I, my focus was relievers because of the pinch hitting aspect. Shot up the middle, right through the box and into center field, and Medica's two for two. A wicked low liner that skidded all the way out to center fielder Revere, the leadoff man on again. Mark, it's nice to see Tommy Medica two at bats, two knocks. Yeah, what a hit last night, and especially adding to that confidence. Now he can have a sigh of relief and go to swinging, and this is exactly what we've seen from Tommy Medica over the season. What a nice swing using the middle of the field. That's always the simplicity. You always go back to what your dad taught you. Hey, when you're struggling, hit up to the middle of the field. That, that's always works. Now no score, bottom of the fourth. Medica leading off with a single. Here's Liriano struck out the first time.
Uh, and away with the fastball. You know, guys, you go back to the book with the, with hitters. There were a lot of teammates that I had that definitely wrote down notes and what they had to process. But if you had mental notes that worked for you, why not do that? But if you couldn't remember some of those things, writing it down is one of those memory things that you're always going to learn in school. And the aspect of that, of going through it and having that process, knowing what they did to get you out, know what you did successfully to go against these pitchers. That is very important when you're hitting. It was uh, even more important before all the video. That, hey, you can go back to the video and restudy. In the old days, you had to keep a little notebook if you were smart. Well, those first two pitches, Liriano overmatched. He's behind two strikes. He took a third strike his first time. You know, guys, for example, Mike Tompkins, the video coordinator here with the Padres, would set up relievers and what they did the last two weeks in the game because that necessarily shows you what they've done recently. Sometimes they'll add a pitch and they'll change their repertoire. Runner goes, ball in the dirt, and Medica has pilfered second base. Surprising Hamels. Medica got a big break against the left hander. And a Padre in scoring position. Yeah, with the left hander on the hill, it's a do or die play. You go on that first move. If he goes over the first base, yeah, you get caught in a pickle or you commit all the way. Tommy Medica picks right, Hamels to the plate. Tommy Medica, 90 feet. With his fourth steal. One and two to Liriano. Yeah, just to make contact, move that runner over to third. The right idea. Try to shoot that to right field. Padres have struggled with runners in scoring position in the series, even though they won the first two games. They were two for nine last night. They're two for 17 in the two games. 0 for three tonight. Here's a chance, bottom of the fourth, to break this scoreless duel. Up high. Wouldn't bite on that 94 mile an hour fastball. You know what's fun about it as Cameron Maven waits on deck? It, it, it's fun to watch Cole Hamels because you know what? It's like he has a purpose with every pitch. Every single pitch. He could command the fastball up and out. He's almost got the knuckle curve grip on the baseball, kind of digging that index finger for his curveball grip. Then he'll adjust accordingly. And he strikes out Liriano again. Five strikeouts for Hamels. One away to Cameron Maven, who singled up the middle his first time. Let's check out what the left hander does here. Is this by design? Well, he was set up inside, and if you set up inside and you miss up top, it's really not going to get hurt. And Mark Sweeney out of the hand, that ball probably looks so inviting, it's tough to lay off, I'll it, bet. It definitely does. That four seam riding action that Cole Hamels gets, and he changes speeds, so he gives you different looks. That's what's difficult going against Cole. So one out, Cameron Maven, chance to pick up Medica from second base. Throw through to second and not close. Ruiz firing down to his second baseman Utley. The spin on the mound, the last 20 starts, he's allowed three runs or less. That's quite a string, 20 in a row. He's not going to give up much, so you've got to take advantage of an opportunity. Here's the chance in the fourth for San Diego. And delivering is Maven again. Here comes Medica around third. He will score, and the Padres take a 1 0 lead. Well, hitters for pitchers, we told you at the start. Maven has the best record against Hamels, 10 for 29 lifetime, and he's two for two tonight. And he goes right up the gut again. One big factor. The pitches I've seen tonight, Cameron Maven get hits on, have been mistakes over the plate, and he is capitalizing. He gets the green light, Tommy Medica does for Glenn Hoffman, to break the scoreless tie. Yeah, the Padres have scored first, the first two games of the series. That bodes well. And they have a run on the board tonight in the fourth. Amarista took a third strike, a debatable strike, his first at bat.
They've been only three stolen bases this year. Two and zero oh to Amarista. Eric Stoltz on deck. Pretty dour presence from Brian <laughs> Sandberg, the manager of the Phillies in this series. You know, I can't be happy. The Phillies are 69 and 82. They have assured themselves. <laughs> And the pitch just on the inside corner. It's two consecutive losing seasons for a team that just figured to be in the playoffs every year. You know, that's the way Sandberg was as a player. I remember playing against him. He was pretty much even keeled the whole way. He could have a game winning hit. St. Rhino as if he punched out with the bases loaded. But you're right, deep down inside, a lot of expectations, especially in the city of brotherly love, right? Right, not a lot of love shown to Papelbon, and, and he blew a save on Sunday. A 4 1 lead evaporated, Miami 1 5 4. It's an aging team. Time does get them all. There goes Maven, swing and a miss. The throw by Ruiz is in time. Tag made by shortstop Galvis. Know if that was a hit and run or run and hit. Amrista trying to protect the runner, and he got him up on the elbow just as the hand reached. No challenge. And Ruiz is only thrown out 20 percent this year. The league average around 30 to 33 percent. Actually, Maven yeah, went to the bag on the inside. Had he gone to the outside of the bag, it might have had the steal. So two outs and the count runs full. And Marista trying to get on there to get the pitcher spot out of the way here in the fourth. Punched him out again. That's twice Amarista thought the strikeout pitch was a ball. Maven driving a couple of ropes to center field. Base hits tonight. That one to drive in Medica. The Padres lead 1-0. West throwing out Jonathan Papelbon after Papelbon made a obscene gesture to the crowd booing him in Philadelphia and then Joe West pulling on the jersey that will cost him one game today Major League Baseball announced that West has been suspended for a single game Papelbon is serving a seven game suspension. Well that was the subject of one of our topics uh, the pregame show I believe it was yesterday or the day before but Mark Sweeney 
Um, you know what? Umpires have to be held accountable as well. I, yeah, I think, I, well you know what? I think one game's kind of light. I agree with you, and that's. Listen, I'm I'm glad that they did do that because they were both unprofessional in that situation, and you saw Papelbon get seven games, yep. only one game for Joe West. Hopefully, that game is when he is behind the home plate. I think that's one of those things that you definitely want to see. Ground ball foul. The first umpire that you saw in that sequence was not Joe West. That's the crew chief Brian Gorman. West is elsewhere and not working tonight apparently. Yeah I think that's pretty light. I figured three games. Ground ball toward the hole and that's the second hit. For the Phils tonight as Darren Ruff finds the 5.5 hole. And that ends a string of 12 consecutive outs thrown by Eric Stoltz. Hey, for Eric Stoltz, he's going to give up some hits, right? And some hits are going to find the holes. The positive way to think about it is that it was a grounder, right? He got his ground ball, just happened to be at one of his infielders. Brings up Dominic Brown. Took a third strike his first time. Fastball strong. So tomorrow night again 530 our TV time here on Fox Sports San Diego will be Robbie Erland the young left hander gets a start and Tyson Ross's spot in the rotation. Luke foul back. Kyle Kendrick will be on the mound for the Phils. He's nine and twelve. Kyle Kendrick no relation to Eddie Kendrick of the Temptations. Oh he isn't. I no think. no relation. A lot of people get confused but he's not. Uh, there's a temptation to fall into that trap. Yeah. Down the line into souvenir section. Now, guys, I like having Robbie Erlin definitely starting tomorrow, especially with all the left handers in yeah. the Philadelphia lineup that has the power element of it. But if you pick a great start to go against, this is a good club to go. Yeah, it's a good test for Robbie Erlin as well to go against that lineup, which is a an aging lineup, Mark Sweeney. And you know, so many ways to look at that when you've got great players like Ryan Howard, Chase Utley, Jimmy Rollins, and, and the year that they've had. How do you, what's your opinion on the Phillies and the, the aging players there? Well, first of all, you get real old when you don't play well. You don't meet your expectations, and I think that's what's happened. Another base hit. Line drive to center off the bat of Dominic Brown, and the first two fills are on. Here in the top of the fifth inning. That's a good point. That when you're not playing well, it seems you're much older than your birth certificate. But they are left handed dominant, and that's a good point that Mark Sweeney makes. Last night, they started their first six batters in order, were all left handed hitters Gwynn, Ashey, Utley, Howard, Sizemore, Brown, and uh, Ryan Steinberg, uh, Ryan Sandberg. Didn't give in when young Frank Garces came in to pitch. He stayed with the left handed hitters against the young Southpaw, and uh, Garces had five straight outs. Well, he's the second oldest team in baseball. Carlos Ruiz grounded to short the first time. Padres would take that same play here, try to turn two to support Stoltz. He's hit into 11 ground ball double plays more than any fill. And Eric has gotten ahead as you take a look at the way the defense of the runners has gotten ahead of Darren Ruff and Brown. One and two to Ruff base hit. Oh two to Brown base hit. One ball one strike to the cancer Ruiz. Field set for two. Another base hit through the hole into left field. Runners will move up 90. They had to hold to see if that line drive would be caught. So Ruff, Brown, and Ruiz, three consecutive singles, and still no one out here in the top of the fifth. Outer half. On contact above the knee for Ruiz. Well, the thing here for Eric Stoltz, bottom of the order, Freddie Galvis. 
And then the pitcher spot. Go for the punch out here up to two strikes. Or I'm sorry, a, a tilt to get two strikes, then go for the punch out. Try to work for a grounder here as you take a look at the Phillies loading the bases here. Rough the tying run. Brown and Ruiz aboard. No one out. Freddie Galvis takes strike one. Well, the Phillies this year with less than two outs and the bases loaded, hitting 323. We pointed out though, bottom of the order, Galvis has only a 134 batting average. And then Hamels. Back to the mound and through the center field. Stultz can't make the play. Two runs will score. It's two to one, Philadelphia. Four straight hits. There was the ground ball, but Stultz couldn't get his glove on it. Just out of the reach of Eric Stoltz. Boy, that had one, two, three written all over it. I really thought Eric had a chance, just missed it. You see the frustration. Eric's reaction after that ball scooted by. Dying my paper cuts here in the top of the fifth inning. Four singles, all sing I. Such a puzzling game. That ball a foot to the left, and it's a double play. Home to first. But four singles, rough Brown, Ruiz, Galvis in order. Still no one out. And Galvis says he gave the Phils the lead last night, three to two on his home run in the fifth inning with a man on, has given the Phils a two one lead here in the fifth inning tonight. So with Hamels up there, the bunt probably being on here, Buddy Black going out there just making sure, probably twofold. One is to get those arms loose, Campos and Alvarez, but just to go over the infielders, what they need to do, get an out. Doesn't necessarily have to be the lead runner. Just need to get an out here. Hamel trying to bunt. His runners into scoring position. Back to Galvis there at first base. Prior to the game last night, he had 78 at bats. With uh, four runs batted in. And now in two games, he has four runs batted in with a two run homer and a bases loaded single. Hamels grounded the second his first time. Bunce. And the put out at first base, a perfect sacrifice, moves the runners up. 5-4 on the put out. And to the top of the order, the Phils go and Ben Revere. Seventh sacrifice bun for Cole Hamels. He gets the handshakes down in the dugout. He leads the Phils with seven. Well, Mark Swinney, these Phils in this inning. Eric Stoltz getting ahead and then putting the ball in play. What do you see? Yeah, you see in a two-strike approach from the Philadelphia Phillies, almost spreading out, not using a stride. Just trying to use your hands. See the ball out of Eric Stelt's hands, but you saw the change that they made, the adjustment, the in game adjustment. Revere, a 306 average on the season, but not as successful with men in scoring position. He has singled, stolen the base, and grounded out tonight. They're playing halfway on the infield. Solarte almost on the edge of the grass at third. Good stuff. Rivera. Revere at the plate. Rivera behind the plate. And left fielder Almonte shaking hands with the foul line and left. That's where Revere seems to like to hit it. That's where he singled in the first inning. So they pitch him inside, but missing two and one with first base open. You have the top average hitter for the Phils at the plate. Not the worst thing that can happen to walk him. With the rookie Michael Franco on deck. Then Utley.
lap foul, two and two. Well, Revere a little hobble after that swing. Talking to some of the Philly broadcasters, say, give me a little nugget on Ben Revere as you take a look at the workload for Eric Stoltz. Remember Mickey Rivers? Oh yeah, did his name when he was with the Angels. Yeah, he yeah. says Ben Revere's in that category. You know, he'll 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 kind of wobble up to the plate like he's. Well, he does have a screw in his in his foot. You know, he fouled right. off a ball last year and went through all that ordeal. But you know, he'll he'll walk up to the plate kind of like you know he needs crutches, and then all of a sudden, next thing you know, he's blazing down the first base line or stealing a bag, just like Nick the Quick. Yeah. Well, old Mickey he walked like he was 70 years old. Arthritis. And then he'd get uh, out of that batter's box, and you couldn't stop him. You had to lasso him. But yeah. He didn't. He wanted to play little league ball on the big league level. He just kept running. Two and two now to Revere. Another good stop. Renee Revere. Full count. <laughs> Mickey Rivers is something. Stories that come to mind. Full count, Revere. Base hit inside the bag of third. That'll get two more home. Revere on his way to second base. That'll be a ground rule double. The ball stuck down there in the left field corner. It's four to one. It's been a hit parade for. The fills and with first base open, they pitch to Revere, a 306 hitter, and he makes them pay a two run double. Well, the tarp is rolled up down there, security and uh, everybody's scrambling. That ball finds its way in between the wall and the tarp. Second visit for manager Black and a pitching change. This fell apart here in the fifth inning. Five hits, four consecutive singles, a sacrifice, two run double, and it's four to one Philadelphia. Since Padres Baseball brought to you by Saquon Casino. Real friendly, real close. By Jack in the Box. Try Jack's spicy chicken club combo. Just $4.99 plus tax. And by the Aramco Group. Purchase, refinance, reverse. Visit us at Aramco.biz. Well, after going four innings and allowing one hit and retiring 12 in a row, the roof caved in here in the fifth. Four consecutive singles, plus a sacrifice and a two run double and a 4 1 Philadelphia lead as RJ Alvarez on the rescue. This pitching change brought to you by Drew Ford. The last time out for RJ was Sunday in the desert against the Diamondbacks, two thirds of an inning. He struck out one snake. He inherits a base runner. 
Here's the rookie Franco who struck out and fly to right against Eric Stoltz. Revere out at second base with his 24th and 25th RBI of the season. The inside ball one. Yeah, the, the four, you know, the, the game, the four singles, same, you know, those are balls that could just as easily have been hit at an infielder and were earlier in the game. They all found a hole. And the sacrifice and the, even Revere's double just inside the bag at third. Fly ball to right. Shallow. Liriano. No advance by Revere. Two away. Chase Utley the hitter. Joe Whelan heating up for San Diego. And you talk about those hits this inning, Dick. So when you've got a pitcher like Eric Stoltz, and I mean, let's face it, he's going to give up his share of hits. 158 innings this year going into this game, 178 hits. Some of them are going to have eyes. Some of them are going to be hit hard. The only ball hit hard that time was off the bat of Revere going the other way inside the pillow at third base. You have to go back more than two months, and Stoltz had an exit this early. He goes four and a third all the way back to June 8th. Walk up here to get to the righty. Marlon Bird. 16 starts. Stoltz giving the Padres good innings. Derek in the fifth. It all came together for Philadelphia. So Utley with the intentional pass. And the Phils have hit around here in the fifth inning as Marlon Bird will come up with the bases loaded. Check that with first and second. We're here at second. How about Alvarez hit 86 on the pitch out? <laughs> 87. Just playing catch. But most guys just lob it up there. Upley aboard. He leads the Phils in intentional walks. That's a 12 time. He's been put on intentionally. Bird lined to third and flying to right. 4 1 fills. Four runs on five hits here in the fifth. Alvarez trying to get out of the inning with the Padres just down by three. Plenty of time left. Five strike. Ball again, right field, and Liriano able to gallop into foul territory, make the catch. Alvarez gets the job done, but the Bills now lead four to one.
Hamels on the mound. We mentioned it earlier. He throws the fastball, but his changeup is his best secondary pitch. Lefty on righty, lefty on lefty. It doesn't matter. Look at the location. You can't get hurt when you're down there and ahead in the count. And when you've got that pinpoint control, he throws it anytime, anywhere, any situation. The success of Cole Hamels. Yes, spotting the fastball, but flipping up that changeup as well. Jake Gobert will pinch it for R.J. Alvarez to lead off the fifth inning. The ninth spot in the order, so Alvarez gets to the two outs. The Padres needed him to retire to get out of that four-run fifth inning, top of the inning for the Phils. Gobert hits a high fly ball to right center. Revere calling. One away. Well, Mark Sweeney, we talked about the fastball and changeup from Hamels. What type of path should a hitter take when facing the left-hander? Well, you got to try to elevate that. And, and when you talk about the changeup, Mark, what indicates how tough that changeup is is when you have a lefty throwing it to another left-hander. Tom Glavin comes to mind, but you also see Hamels that has that velocity on the fastball, which makes it very difficult to sit on each pitch. So. This guy understands how to pitch. You, you made a great point. He knows how to throw a strike with it. He also knows how to make it look like a strike and get out of the strike zone. Interesting. You mentioned Tom Glavin. Cole Hamels called Glavin his idol growing up. Fastball 58% tonight. Change up 35%. But more than one out of three pitches are change ups. Left center field. That's going to fall for a base hit for Solarte. Over to cut it off is Brown and holding at first, Solarte. That's the sixth hit for the Padres off Hamels. I think this is something that Mark Sweeney just made a point of, right? Getting a pitch that's elevated on contact, you betcha. I'm liking Solarte more and more. He doesn't strike out much, he makes good contact. Nope. Third base has been certainly adequate. Plus, El Monte grounds that toward the hole. Cut off. Second for one. Back to first. Double play. Franco. Nice play by the rookie at third base. On to second to Utley and the five. Four. Three. Double play. El Monte. The inning's over. Four one fills. Summary Hammer Maven, one of his two line drive singles to center that brought home Medica. The Padres with a one nothing lead in the fourth, but it was a series of base hits for the Phils. That's the two run single by Galvis up the middle, made it 2 1, and then the double inside the bag at third. Ben Revere, and that scored two more as the Phils in the fifth, four runs on five hits. And claiming the lead 4 1. Hamels, meanwhile, has allowed just the one run on six hits. Stoltz, only one hit through four, but it all fell apart in that fifth inning. Revere, two for three, a double and an RBI. Two RBIs. 
as Ruff, who led off that fifth inning with a single to left field, starts it here in the sixth against Joe Whelan, making his third appearance. You know, part of the managing gig is, uh, and, and Mark Sweeney and Dick can weigh in on this as well. Uh, enjoy your guys' thoughts, but in a game like this, right? Still a lot of baseball left, but trailing a good chance to get the young arms in there and get a little bit of experience. We saw Alvarez, now Joe Whelan. We talked about his Tommy John surgery back in 2012, making that start in Colorado. So this, uh, this is a good game for him to get maybe an inning or two from Joe Whelan. Two balls and a strike and foul back. Now I got to agree with that too, Mark. I mean, you look at Bud Black and trying to script the middle of the a game and and try to get to that area where you're in in striking distance and yes they are it's only 4 1 but you understand you have to manage the middle of the game to try to get to your guys and hopefully you come up with some offense as well. Remember the Phils do not have their closer Papelbon on suspension. Two balls and two strikes and now three and two to rough. And you know Joe Whelan also has got to realize that you know this is not you know, they're only trail by three, so this is a beginning for him, right? Left center field. No one's going to catch that. That's going to go all the way to the wall. And rough. Doing just that to the Padres. A rough. A single, now a double. Greeting Whelan. You know, the young arms that have come up for the Padres here in oh, September, yeah. one of the things that I've noticed is that is that ball He's on the outer half, but elevated a little bit. At times, difficulty locating that fastball and getting hurt by it. It's going to happen, especially at this level with the big league hitters. So leadoff double for the Philly first baseman. Here's Dominic Brown. He's singled as part of that five-run, four-run, and five-hit attack in the fifth inning. Strike at 91. But Joe Whelan and Robbie Erlin, who will start tomorrow night, were the two key players acquired from the Rangers a couple of years ago when relief pitcher Mike Adams traded to Texas. Adams now out in the bullpen for the Philadelphia Phillies. Both with arm problems. Kind of see the scar on that left elbow of Joe Whelan. To left field, base hit. Ruff will stop at third. Now Monte gets it in. Oh, a double and a single to say hello to Joe Whelan. Brown has a couple of hits. Carlos Ruiz singled and scored in the fifth inning. Long look. Veteran catcher. 29 runs batted in this year. Slice to right. That's going to make it into the seats. Ruiz best year with the Phils. Two years ago, 2012, he had 325, 16 homers, 68 runs batted in. Now 35 from Panama. He's had a nice career. He really has. Yep. Tough out. Infield looking for a chance at two. Pretty good pitch there. One and one. 92 on the fastball. Last three years, 325 as we mentioned in 2012. Then he's had some injury problems last year and this year. And he knows his main objective is. To try to stay healthy and work that pitching staff, right? Calling a game, framing pitches, blocking pitches.
It's appeared in 102 of the games this year. Well, he's missed uh, 50 some games with injuries and uh, the occasional time off for the starting catcher. Well, on the horn, Darren Balsley. You and don't. Buddy with his cap off. Yeah, you don't want to let this one get out of hand. Yeah, guys, the pace has slowed down a lot. I don't know if Joe Whelan's not feeling good on the mound, but he is taking a lot of time in between pitches. First and third. No one out. Center field hit well. Maven going back has a play. Tagging and scoring is rough. Five to one Philadelphia. Ruiz with his 30th run batted in on the sacrifice fly. Brown holding at first base. See how nice and easy Dick that swing was. To center field and Mark Sweeney. I mean, you're, you're closer to the action, but I guess the point I'm trying to make is that you know Joe Whelan trying to make some good pitches. He's got the firm fastball, but yet big league hitters they like it firm and they like it straight. They don't worry about speed, no, and definitely not. You always talk about speed element, but movement is what causes a lot of the problems for the hitters. And here's the pesky number eight hitter in the lineup for the Phils, Freddie Galvis. Last two nights, doubling his. RBI total from four to eight the two run homer last night the two run single tonight. Shot one right back through the middle right through the box to knock in two against Stoltz curveball one and one. Alex Torres. Joe Whelan still in that phase of testing out an arm that's been operated upon. Good stop again by Rivera. Two and one the count. Pitcher Cole Hamels on deck. Takes them out, uh, especially a young arm. It's a tight wire wrap. Runner goes. Chopped to the second baseman. He picked the wrong side. Had he gone to the shortstop side, that would have been a successful hit and run. Galvis out. 4 3. The runner moves up. Hey, don't miss an all-new episode of Aztec Football with Rocky Long tomorrow night on Fox Sports San Diego. This week, Coach Long shares an inside look at the Oregon State matchup for the Aztecs. As take a look on the field. And go down on the field with running back D.J. Humphrey. He's good. Yes, he is. Plus, J.J. Whitaker takes the mic and takes over the show tomorrow night after Chargers Insider right here on Fox Sports San Diego. They did everything but beat North Carolina in Chapel Hill last week. Very easily could have come home with a win, and now they go to Oregon State trying to get a Pac 12 scalp. How the Chippewas do? Oh, I can't remember. Hamels grounded out and sacrificed. Syracuse, you know, they've got a good program now. Oh, and now the Chippewas have to play Kansas at Kansas this week. That's so a Lawrence or Manhattan? Yeah, Lawrence. So they have Purdue, Syracuse, Kansas, you know, the bigger university programs. Mm -hmm. Just trying to take two out of three. 0 oh 2 to Hamels. And a swing and a miss. And that's it for the Phils in the sixth. But they add on a double by Ruff. Brown single and Ruiz sacrifice fly. It's 5 1.
to tomorrow night's game against the Phillies and the Padres as we take a look why? at why? Why tomorrow? Because Harry Black's going to twirl against the Astros back in the oh, day. Look at my. the left-hander. Yeah. It's Throwback Thursday right back here at uh, Fox Sports San Diego. Will Venable. He hasn't changed much, has he? We're going to share some photos and some videos of the current San Diego Padres. Cameron Maven <laughs> going way back. So Throwback Thursday, Padres versus the Fight Phils. Beginning with Padres Live right here in Fox Sports San Diego tomorrow at 6.30. So please join us. It'll be fun. We're going to see you uh, with some at hair. that age. Yeah, with a smaller waist and some hair. That's worth coming to see. Jerko Rivera, Medica, Padres down by four here in the last of the sixth inning against Cole Hamels. Jerko, a double and a ground out to second. And the other thing you want to stay tuned after our game tonight, Fox Sports San Diego's uh, Padres Live, the postgame show. The drama is building and pick the stick. Oh, it could very well be a change of lead tonight. It's a tight race. Mark Grant starts tonight in the lead, but by just a few points. Mark Sweeney charging hard. Sweeney's having a good night. Mark is not. Let's see what happens. You'll get all of that tonight along with the highlights. <laughs> Padres Live, the postgame show. Swing dog, it's a good fight, huh? It's a good fight, yeah, I love it. I love it too. It's I love a lot of fun. I love the competition. You know what's funny is we have nothing to do with it. <laughs> the players do. <laughs> That's a good point. Two and two to Jerko. Now I was ahead by six points before tonight's game, correct? I have no idea. I didn't, oh, I didn't, I didn't okay. look at, yeah, the, at the leader. Yeah. I know I'm behind you. Yeah, sure That's you all. do. Well, you picked Almonte, committed an error, and he's double and hit into a double play. So you're going to lose three points. You're now at 226. And Sweeney with Maven has two single. He's plus three. You're tied right now. Oh, my. Can you stand <laughs> it? This theater is fabulous. Uh, that's hit great stuff. Stick. This is more exciting than La Jolla Playhouse on a Friday night. <laughs> Cooperstown is watching. They, they'll probably want the tape of that postgame show. Jerko hits it long and foul. Pitch count for Hamels is at 80, but he'll often go 110 to 120. So that's not a factor here in the sixth inning. What is the fact that Hamels leaning on a four-run lead? And a foul tip, strike three on a changeup. Seven strikeouts for Cole Hamels. And the seventh strikeout for Hamels is a changeup down and away. Wow. He's getting the Padres to swing at that ball down at their ankle. He's got as much confidence in that pitch as throwing the old number one at any time of the count. And most of all, Rene Rivera having trouble reading Hamels. He struck out both times. Steady diet of change ups, but he starts him with a fastball inside. Outside, 2 0. Oh. Time now for the Cholula flamethrower, Cole Hamels. Heating it up to 95, Mark Sweeney. What's that? That is hot sauce. Oh, wow. Hey, guys. Uh, Mark, Dick, do you know where I can find a fish taco? Uh, let me see. Oh, I don't know. Where? Do you know? Oh. oh. You like you like pescado? Oh, I love pescado. Shrimp tacos or pescado tacos? Oh, pescado tacos. Two and one. With hot sauce. Fly ball behind first. That's a pretty tough play. Angling over is Utley, and it drops. Back to first base, Rivera on a bloop single. First baseman, Ruff, made a good play on it, but couldn't quite come up with it. He had his back to home plate like a wide receiver running downfield on a post pattern and couldn't quite come up with the ball. Seemed like that ball hung up there for a long, long time. Bird. He's not even close. Utley. Not even close, and like you said, Dick, Ruff was the closest one there, just out of the reach. That's a big league knock. It's like Sweeney's dog that can uh, speak baseball. You ask him, uh, who was that first baseman again? Ruff. Ruff, Ruff yeah. Get out of here. <laughs> what, was it the Macho? 
Medica two for two tonight. Outside. Mark Sweeney, how well do you know uh, downtown Chicago, the buildings in downtown Chicago? Uh, not that great. Well, I think the guy next to me does, huh? How about the uh, the Marina Towers? I know where right. that is. Yeah. How about the Leo Burnett building? No. It's on the other side of the Chicago is that next River. To the, the Carol Burnett Apartments? <laughs> it's right across the river, Chicago River, from okay. the Marina Towers. Okay. We mentioned the tight wire rack. Carl Melinda? Your, your guy. No, it's Nick. He's 35, the okay. son. He's going to do it. 50 stories up, he's going to walk a tight wire across the Chicago River in and, November. And no net, right? No net, no parachute. Yeah, the Wolundas, they never worked with a net. Wow. That's kind of like a baseball pitcher. You didn't work with a net, did you? No. Tight wire act in the Windy City. I know the Windy in City. In November? I know. Ooh. And I know Windy... Is because of the politics back in the day, you know, everybody talking the, the, the hot wind. But it does get windy there. We all know that. He says uh, he want, hopes it's nice and cold and windy. 3 0. Oh, up high, a strike at 93. I'd like to see Tommy Medica add on to the two hits tonight, working a hitter's count as Liriano waits on deck. Rivera with that bloop single is aboard. Cut into that 5 1 lead. Could have been ball four. Hey, very few home runs given up this year by Cole Hamlet. Only 13. Shot to short. There's one. Back to first. The 6 4 3 double play. Galvis up late to rough. And that's it for the Padres in the six. At Riverfront Stadium, right in the World Series, I still, I still see that. Uh, I still see that slide. Uh, you know, I see the sort of the front foot swing. Uh, great player, great player, and uh, you know what a tragedy. But you know, and just reading about him, you know, all these years later, you know, what a great humanitarian. Now as Padres manager Buddy Black when asked what comes to mind when you think of Roberto Clemente and I think so many people think about what he did off the field because what he, that was so sh in, uh, extraordinary too excuse me but Buddy focusing on what he did on the field and, and that's what you love about the game is that managers that just sit there in the dugout and tell stories about their favorite baseball pastimes. Yeah, Clemente had a so many fans. You had to like the way he played this game. Joe Whelan into a second inning. It's Ben Revere, Michael, Michael Franco, and then Chase Utley. One and one. Hey, the Pro Football Hall of Fame nominees came out. Uh, in the last 24 hours, high fly ball to center. 
Maven back a couple of steps for the first down and uh, a lot Who's of interest. Well, there's some local uh, San Diego Chargers on the list that'll create some interest. It's a it's a big 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 list right now. Uh, 99 players and 14 coaches, and they'll whittle it down to 25 in November and then to 15. But Junior Seau, who will be a first ballot Hall of Famer, he'll go in. Is on it. Don Coriel should. Goodness, how can he not be in the Hall of Fame? And John Lynch, who played his high school ball at uh, Torrey Pines High before starring Tampa and Denver. Darn good career for John Lynch. Ripped into left field. Foul. Just foul off the bat of Franco. No, it is fair. And he's into second base with a double. Down in that corner out of our line of sight. And Franco found that little piece of pie down there in the fair territory. How close was it to fair foul? Right on the line, yep. took up some chalk. Yeah, we couldn't see that from our angle. So, uh, one out double for Franco, and Wheeland in trouble again here in the seventh. Gave up a run in the sixth. Utley has popped the short, grounded to second. Second, so a series of signs for Vera. Strike at 92. Looks like Joe Whelan is getting on top of that curveball as you take a look at the Phillies box score. All told, five runs, nine hits. Rivera, getting, Ruff, and Brown all with a pair. Yeah. Joe's getting good rotation, good arm speed on that curveball, good break. That's a good sign. Just outside. Two and one. Leonel Campos. Up in the Padre pen. So it's a night featuring uh, September call ups. Alvarez, Wheeling coming back. Campos. Shot to second, right to Churko on one hop, and Utley is out as Franco moves to third. Well, as we promised you earlier, we have the AT&T fan photo for you. You can tweet your photo to hashtag SD fan photo. A chance to be shown in an upcoming broadcast right here. Brought to you by AT&T. Thank you very much, Stephanie. At Stephazilla. There you go. Hubba hubba. Whoa, Marlon Bird looks at a breaking ball that doesn't. At third with two out. Franco. 5-1 fills. We're in the top of the seventh here at Petco. Ooh, that was a good yeah. breaking ball. One and one. Good yacker. How many ways can you uh, describe a curveball? Oh, that's a good one. That's yeah. a good topic. Swing and a miss. One and two. I'll give you some time, and uh, we'll check back after okay. re after recess and see uh, what you come up with. One ball, two strikes. You folks at home can play along now, and all the different lexicon for the baseball curveball. See if you get one that Mark Grant doesn't. One and two the count. Fly ball right center. Maven into the gap. And that's it for the Phillies in the seventh. So let's stand and stretch. Seventh inning at Petco. 5 1 Phillies.
good news about Joaquin Benoit through a bullpen earlier today for the first time through all of his pitches felt well during the pen so if he feels okay tomorrow if there's no soreness then Buddy Black says he should be available on Friday also a quick update on Tyson Ross Buddy Black does not know when he will pitch next but it will definitely not be during that giant series because he set the pitching lineup for that and that will go Odris Martin Despagne, Kashner and then Kennedy. He says they're still waiting to see how he responds to treatment. He's been dealing just with some soreness and some fatigue so he will not be pitching this weekend series. All right. Thanks for that update Chris. A lot of folks wondering if uh, Tyson will get another start hit that 200 strikeout mark. Kennedy also flirting with 200 this uh, end of the season. So against the Giants, the Spagne on Friday against Tim Hudson. Saturday, Kashner draws Yusmero Petit, and then Kennedy on Sunday. No announcement as to the Giant pitcher for Sunday as yet. Meanwhile, Cole Hamels looking for his ninth win of the year and his ninth against the Padres lifetime. Nine and two he would be. Faces Liriano, Maben, and Amarista. And two and two now to Liriano. He has struck out both times. <laughs> and the count goes full. Pretty good numbers, huh? Gets the Padres. The local kid sticking it to his. Team growing up as a kid. Team he rooted for. And he strikes out Liriano for the third time. Another changeup. Eight strikeouts for Hamels. Look. look around the league tonight. Brandon McCarthy, the former D back, pitching for the Yankees in an immaculate inning. Only the 78th time Major League history. Nine pitches, three strikeouts. Adam Wainwright wins again. 19th win. Tied for the National League lead. Shut out the Brewers. Justin Morneau, three for four, looking for the National League batting title in that 16 to 2 drubbing of the Dodgers. They went limping on to Chicago. They play at Wrigley on the weekend. Think about it. Immaculate inning. It's only happened 78 times. It's amazing. And there's been over 200, 250 some no hitters thrown, whatever. Because. You strike out the side right on nine pitches. So the foul ball on two strikes, you're done. You can't do it. You throw a ball, you're done, obviously. Right? Did you ever come close? I, please. No, I'm not <laughs> trying to. <laughs> no, I, I don't think so. I, you know, I, I really can't tell. Really don't, don't recall ever uh, doing something ever uh, as close as that. But that is truly amazing. See, it's the foul ball that gets you yeah, on two right. strikes. I mean, you could win a bet anywhere and say, okay, no hitters versus the immaculate inning. Yeah. It's not even close. Maybe now two and one. He's got a couple of singles and two at bats and drove in the Padre run. Two Brian, and two. Brian Lawrence did it for the Padres back in Baltimore. That was like maybe mid 2000s, early 2000s. A.J. Burnett did it. Third inning. Back on June 20th, 2009, at Florida, all swinging. At that time, became the 40th pitcher of all time to accomplish that feat. Right, three called, nine strikeouts for Hamels. Change has been the story. That looks like a fastball right there, didn't it? It was. Inside corner. Nine strikeouts for Hamels. Two away, and here's Alexi Amarista. Ends one outside. So had he struck out the first two batters on three pitches each, that would have been that pitch outside would have ended the immaculate inning for him. Amarista striking out both at bats tonight. Called strikes. And then you could talk about the immaculate reception, right? Well, that's a different city. Steelers. That Pittsburgh. Who was that against? Oakland, uh, Oakland Raiders. Raiders. Franco Harris. They still don't know if that ball touched the turf. That's right. 
See, they just uh, were way behind baseball. See, if they had baseball system where you could stop play and spend two or three minutes to, to review all the cameras, they would have decided whether. Well, there, there was, was another description too, whether it hit the defender first and then the receiver, right? Because then it would have been a dead ball, right? Jack, Jack Tatum was the Raiders' the defensive back. Two and two now to Amarista. One of the great plays in uh, NFL history, certainly. What a great. Uh, Franchise, the Steelers, the Rooneys. Oh, yeah. Wonderful leaders of the sport and great owners. You know, you'd come to town and do a Steeler game, and Art Rooney, the patriarch, his sons that have taken over in magnificent style, they made you feel like uh, you were the next door neighbor. They couldn't do enough for you. No, just yeah. down to earth, good people. Two and two, foul back again. On the doorstep of striking out the side here in the seventh. High fly ball to left, curling into foul territory. A tough play, but made successfully by Franco. Padres gone in the seventh in order. After seven, five one for the visitors. Mark Sweeney, Mike Pomerantz, working on Padres Live. It's the post-game show. It'll be brought to you by Cox Communications. When we see in the post, we're going to talk about everything National League West and all around baseball as we get you set for the playoff race. And the Giants in action tonight against Arizona. They're getting it done. They're going to be the Padres' next opponent. Yeah, you're looking for magical moments. And Matt Duffy, the pinch hitter today, coming through for the Giants. That's what you need to have. You need guys to have stepped-up moments at big times. So the Giants take the Diamondbacks. The Dodgers get way late. And now the Giants are back by just two games in the National League West. So when we see on Padres Live, the post-game show, we'll get you all caught up on all the action on the field, off the field, and our Fox Sports San Diego MLB insider Scotty Miller is going to join us. He's got a brand-new article on our website, foxsportssandiego.com. It's on Jake Gobert. He'll break down that and the playoff prospects when we see after the final out. All right, Mike and Mark will be with you. Don't forget the giant group comes in here for three in the weekend and then the Padres end the season four in San Francisco. So seven games left between the Giants and the Padres. Padres going to have something to say about whether San Francisco catches Los Angeles and Chris Bochy and Buster Posey and Pablo Sandoval and that crew knows that uh, they have their difficulties with San Diego six and six the record between the two teams this year. New pitcher is Lionel Campos. He faces Darren Ruff. Ruff lined to center, singled and scored, doubled and scored. Two for three. And he takes strike three. 
This is copyright to telecast. It's presented by authority of the San Diego Padres. It may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and description of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the San Diego Padres. Dominic Brown, he's two for three. A couple of singles the last two times up. Shift is on. Solarte from third over to the second base side. Amrys to the lone figure there on the left side. Ninety-five on the fastball. Last time out for Campos was in the desert Saturday at Arizona, ending at two-thirds. Three safeties, a run. He struck out one diamond back. Back through the middle. Amarista ranging behind second and throws him out. Good play by Amarista. Ah, the little ninja at work. Covering some ground. Helping out Campos. Nicely done, Alexi. Two away. Carlos Ruiz, the catcher, comes up. He has singled and scored and knocked in another run with a sacrifice fly. Joe Whelan worked two innings, allowed one run, three hits, and struck out a man. Stolt started four and a third, four runs, six hits, no walks, two strikeouts. RJ Alvarez worked uh, two thirds of an inning, got both hitters, one intentional pass, and now Campos. 1 0. Oh. Hey now. Stop the clock. Spike that one. <laughs> that was like a 48 foot slider. <laughs> Called a ball by Hamari. It's 2 0. Oh. <laughs> Ball to third. Solardi cuts it off. Long throw in plenty of time. Well, Lionel Campos, one, two, three, his story. Bill Howe play of the game by rookie Michael Franco going down into that left field corner and making the catch against the railing to uh, retire the Padres. That was against uh, Alexi Amarista and the seventh inning. New pitcher for the Phils here in the eighth inning. Jake Diekman comes in. One of, one of the good arms out of that Philly bullpen. 
throws it a hundred. Mm. Slider, change up. 69th game for the left hander. And look at the punch outs. 94 strikeouts in 66 and two thirds innings for the young left hander. Yes. This guy threw too many sliders. Philadelphia Philly farmhand had a date with Dr. Andrews. <laughs> Blown out owner collateral. Hang with him, big boy. Get him next spring. <laughs> Love your work, lefty. Adam Moore will pinch hit. Lionel Campos. One, two, three inning. Moore, the last time up, double. He's one for five here in September. Double to right center field. And the top of the order, Salarte and El Monte. 97 on his first greeting to Moore. And Kenny Giles is another out there in that yes. bullpen for uh, Philadelphia at high heat. Yep. 97 again. Veteran catcher. Good man to have in the farm system. Rewarded for his work. Yeah. El Paso. Adam, absolutely. Adam Moore, one of those blue collar guys. You know? Nothing flashy. He just wants to put on the gear and contribute for the club. Got to know Adam a little bit since his call up. The kind of guy you, you really appreciate on a team. Doesn't say much, just does his work, works hard. A cup of coffee a few times with the Seattle Mariners. Yeah. The Royals a little bit. 97. He's consistent with that fastball, Deakman. So Cole Hamels goes seven innings, one run, seven hits, one walk, and nine strikeouts. Padres knew it would be a tough night. Hamels, if he wins it, will be nine and two lifetime. Swing and a miss after those 97 mile an hour fastballs. A wicked slider. Strikeout number one for Deakman. Well, I have a feeling the red pen is going to be at work right about now because now it's time to revisit the keys of the game brought to you by the Honda dealers of San Diego County. Continue to roll at home. Padres are trailing five to one here in the bottom of the eighth. And uh, do some damage when Hamels is on the ropes. One for five with runners in scoring position. Had the bases loaded in the second. He was on the ropes, but couldn't capitalize. I can't give you what I'm thinking, so I'll, let's call it an incomplete. <laughs> I see. I incomplete. See. Incomplete. I got. It. I mean, I can't. Well, do you want? Do you want what I really would give you? Yeah. How about this one right here? Wow. You got to face the facts here. F. Failure. A I, fat, I, drunk, and stupid is no I, I way to go it. through life, son. <laughs> I gave you a chance for an incomplete or a withdrawal. You could withdraw from the class. I'll with, no, no, I, I no I'm that. not a quitter. I'm oh, not no. a quitter. Good. I'm staying in the class. We're going to have a good one tomorrow. I want to get better. You are going to be terrific. I tomorrow. want to do good. Good. No, you don't. Good. Very good. You want to do well, and then you'll get a I better know. grade than I said that on purpose. It's <laughs> the name of this stupid act. Oh, the old professor. Tomorrow's Two. another day. Thursday. Chance for Robbie Erland to beat Kyle Kendrick and take the series. The Padres have been terrific since the All-Star break at home. Winning series are 8-0-1-1. Ooh. Salarte, a weak wave at that one. Two and two. You get ready for the fastball, and then he throws that slider, and you can't hold back. That kind of stuff. How can Deakman have a 3.65 ERA? Well, you know what? Remember earlier we were talking about fastballs and straight fastballs and big league hitters can catch up to him. If you're wild in the zone, you throw him over the heart of the plate. These guys can turn it around. Sixty-six innings. He has given up four home runs. Full count. Solarte. He has a single in three trips. 
Slide out twice to right. Del Monte on deck. Oh, it's getting nervous time up here in our television booth because Del Monte's got one more chance to make amends for yeah. a minus three from my partner. He moved back into first place when Maven struck out in the last inning. Right field side. Will there be a play into the corner? And, oh, watch out, Marlon Bird. Well, the big man defying his age going after that. About 37 years young. It was a good effort. I really didn't think he had a chance to get this one. Right into the rib cage, and he actually got his glove on. Oh, it, yeah, he? he had it hit his thumb. Oh, the glove that was a very catchable ball. Good effort, Marlon Bird. Well, Dickman will come back with a 3 2 pitch again. Line to right, base hit. That's Salardi. Second hit. And he's going to get two out of this one. And the Padres have a man in scoring position with one out here in the eighth inning. Single in the double and four advance for Salarte tonight. Chris Button's choice. Boy, oh, he did such a good job of just taking that elevated pitch and just shorten up the swing and playing Pepper the other way. Watch him just get the barrel of the bat out in front, shorten up on the back side, and just taking it that way. Perfectly executed. That's what you're talking about. Yep. Uh, that fastball 97, but if it's straight, just gets the heavy end of the bat on yep. it. Abraham El Monte. Why do you have your fingers crossed? El Monte has popped up, grounded out, and grounded into a double play and committed an error. So on our pick to stick, that's a minus three for the leader coming into this game. The time running out. It's going to be a battle for two marks. Don't miss the pregame where they have to make their picks. Oh, yeah. And then you want to see the postgame to see who's in first place. <laughs> Almonte, a good fastball hitter. A little late on that swing. Yeah. So, Larde on at second base. Padres need four to tie. <laughs> Look at that next <laughs> Put that baseball away. No one can find it. Get home. Outside with a breaking ball. That's why you have to stick around, right? You never know if you're going to get a foul ball. And your chances increase because some of the other folks who are impatient have to leave. And it increases your chances. High chopper to short. Solarte gets back to second, and Galvis throws out El Monte. Two away. Jedrico, a double, a round out, and a strikeout. Can I change my F to an incomplete? Yes, class is still in session. Yeah, as long as class is in session, you can change. Yeah, would you be so kind, Professor, okay. to change that to an All incomplete? Right. Because it'll look better on my record. I and C, Mr. Grant. There we go. And C, you saw it there. You can make Thank it come you. back tomorrow. Thank you very yeah. much. I you, appreciate. you try hard. A hard trier, I appreciate. <laughs> A big crier, I don't. Hey, Jerko, Jed Jerko. There's a, another RBI out there for you. Could run into one, huh? He likes the straight fastball. Three for eight in the series for Jed. And he's extended his hitting streak eight straight games. Mm. Mm, just missed that. That he? was a mistake right there. 97 into his power zone. Oh, how nice. That fan gave it to the kid. Look at how happy that makes them. Good for them. Nice. Hey! <laughs> a 
Ball gets away and uh, no chance for Solarte to advance. Don't want to take the risk. Down by four. One and two now to Jerko. to the count. You know, with a name like Deekman, you would think he'd be more of a curveball slider. Yeah. Trick him tied a pitcher, not a fireballer. Trying to deke him rather than right. blow him down. Outside and the count full to Jerko. Of Nebraska, you know, the state of Nebraska produces a lot of major league players. You know, for a small population state, they love their baseball in the Corn Husker State. He went to high school in Wymore. And outside, two men are on. Padres one swing away from making this mighty interesting. Hey, fans. Let's get involved and get Mr. Enberg into the broadcast ring of the Baseball Hall of Fame. Dick's been nominated for the prestigious Ford C. Frick Award, recognizing excellence in broadcasting in the sport of baseball. Fans have a chance to vote for their favorite broadcaster. So get online. Let's get the professor into the Hall of Fame. Go to Facebook.com slash Baseball Hall. That's Facebook.com slash Baseball Hall. Remember, fans, you can vote once a day until September 30th. So get online. But when you get online and see the other candidates, there's so many that are qualified. I applaud any uh, vote at all, you know, just to participate. But I, you know, thank you uh, yeah. for uh, for the commercial. I mean, that's a highly meaningful honor. Absolutely. And mostly when it's the game you love most. Sure. You know? Yep. All right. Renee Rivera, two strikeouts and a bloop single. To get in barrel on that fastball and make this interesting. Two on, two out, five one fills. Ball one. Even if he rifles something the opposite way and wears out that right center field gap as there's action in the fills pen. Antonio Bastardo, Justin DeFreitas. Solardi with a double, Jerko with a walk. We're ready to roll with two outs. Fly ball to center. Routine. And Revere there to glove it. Inning over. After eight, Philadelphia five, San Diego one.
The power of together. And by your San Diego Lexus dealer. Beautiful Petco Park on this Wednesday night. The weather is cooled a bit, which is pleasant for all. Hope to see you out here tomorrow night, 5.30 for Fox Sports San Diego, 6.10, not 7.10 for the opening pitch. Final game of the four-game series, Robbie Erland against Kyle Kendrick. Alex Torres, the sixth pitcher used by Bud Black tonight. Yeah, buddy, fifth pitcher. Yeah, buddy kind of uh, spread it out a little bit. We saw some of the youngsters, Alvarez, Wieland, Campos. Veteran left-hander Alex Torres a chance to throw up a zero and kind of help that ERA a little bit. High on the walks. Freddie Galvis, then the pitcher spot, and Ben Revere to bat in the ninth inning. You know it's frustrating about those numbers for Alex. The walks are up, but yet a strikeout per innings pitch. So the strikeout is there, no doubt. He's got the good stuff. He's proven it in the past. Chance to throw up a zero here in the ninth. Ooh. Galvis has been a, a pain to the Padre pitching, hitting out of the eighth spot. Two run single tonight. Whoa! That goes one way, the ball the other, and Jerko throws him out. Shattered that lumber. One away. Oh, that snapped off right around his knuckles. Pinch hitter will be Cesar Fernandez batting for Jake Deakman. There's the pitch. Shatter, shatter, Shadoobi. Shadoobi? Rats on the west side, bedbugs uptown. Oh, I get you. What am I, what a mess. This town's in tatters. I've been shattered. Edgar Allan Cole, right? Vic Jagger, Rolling Stone, of course. Just missed. <laughs> Edgar Allan Poe would be never more. Wait for Baltimore, and we'll get that one on him. They'll never figure it out. Hernandez. They count one and one. One and two. Hundred and nine at bats for Hernandez on the season. Twenty seven of them as a pinch hitter, five for twenty seven. Ground ball to third. Solardi there on the second hop. And the tag made by Medica for the out. Two away. Hey, Pottery fans, be sure to stay tuned after this one, after the Potteries come back and win it. Scott Miller has got a great article online right now, FoxSportsSanDiego.com, a life on the pumpkin farm with Jake Gobert. Jake Gobert, the great pumpkin. Is a pumpkin a squash or a squash a pumpkin? Ooh, that and much, much yeah. more. That's why you want to stay tuned. Yeah, There's a, Jake. It's a part of all of our lives, the, the pumpkin in October. And, of course, that's big business for the Gobert family. And with Halloween right around the corner, you want to know all you can about the great pumpkin. Will he rise from the pumpkin patch? DeAndros was the great pumpkin up at Oregon State, the yeah. coach there. Yeah. Oh, that's right. <laughs> you know, the only thing is Gary Owens, the former uh, star on KMPC Radio in Los Angeles and then on Latin, Chopper to the second. So the shortstop, Amarista, he said, nothing wrong with pumpkins. It's the pumpkin pee up. Yeah, when you reach in and get that stuff inside, <laughs> you're making your tackle. Yeah. We'll be back with more.
Isn't that what it's all about? Yeah. Come to a big league ball game, have some fun, yeah. do a little dancing. Football, yeah, backfield in motion, baseball, well. Well, Saturday, MLB returns to Fox, the Dodgers and the Cubs on Fox Sports San Diego, the Padres and the Giants. Action starts at doubleheader, 9.30 a.m. Pacific on Fox, and then continues at 5 o'clock Pacific right here on Fox Sports San Diego. Well, we've talked about Ken Giles. He'll be 24 in three days. And the Phils really like this young guy. He's gone 10 consecutive scoreless innings. Hasn't allowed a hit in the last eight innings, eight straight appearances. Let's see how he does in his 41st appearance of the season. Yeah, and you see the splits lefties and righties, 138 lefties, 188 righties. And here's the scouting report on, on the kid, Ken Giles. Two pitch pitcher, fastball slider, 95 to 101 mm. on the fastball. Six two and two hundred and five pounds, a native of Albuquerque, New Mexico. Raw rookie, and faces Medica first. Medica two singles, scored a run, stole a base, and grounded into a double play the last time. Corey right. Spangenberg is on deck. You got the fastball in the back of your mind, and Giles flips up a slider, first pitch, first strike at eighty-seven. Another slider. 0 oh 2. Spangenberg apparently will hit for Liriano, who struck out all three times tonight against Cole Hamels. And strike three. Three straight breaking balls, and Medica goes down. And here's Spangenberg. Spangenberg with a big triple of the first inning last night. Led the way for the Padres to win 5 4. Giles, pretty much a reliever throughout his whole major league career, which has been a short one. Drafted in 2011. Fast track to the big leagues. Fairly long shot drafted in the seventh round. And here he is, a quick jump to the big leagues, his fourth professional year. So he was drafted the same June draft as the man he faces here, Corey Spansenberg, who was the first round pick of the Padres. Another breaking ball, one and one. Ken Giles went to a pretty good baseball program at Yavapai over in uh, Arizona where Kyle Blanks played. Junior college baseball. The yeah, Avapai's, uh, they got a good program over there. One and two. Is that near Yuma? You know what? Uh, geographically speaking, Professor, I'm not really sure where Yavapai is. I think it might be north of Phoenix, maybe up near Prescott. Well, he's from New Mexico, so is uh, Kyle Blanks. Maybe it's more. Eastern, Eastern Arizona. Ground ball to second. Spangenberg hustles, but he's out 4-3, and the Padres are down to their final out. Cameron Maben was 2-3 for three against Hamels and drove in the only run for the Padres. Two singles. He struck out the last time. Prescott, Arizona, which is north of Phoenix. Mm -hmm. A little northeast of Phoenix. That gets up there into the uh, mountain country a little bit, doesn't it? Five-one Phillies, two outs in the bottom of the ninth inning. Ninety-nine on that ball upstairs. Phillies looking for their seventieth win of the year. They've lost eighty-two. Ninety nine. Actually, Prescott is pretty much uh, due north of Phoenix. Just straight up the 17, west of the 17. And you know what they say? You have a pie. Have some pie. Is that what they say? Have a slice of pie. 
What kind do they? Uh, Whatever you want. Three and zero. Oh. What kind would you pick? Banana cream. Ooh, that's good call. That's a good call. Mine's strawberry rhubarb. Ooh, I like rhubarb with a little strawberry there. Take the yeah. tartness. Off. Three and zero. Oh. And that one hits the corner at 96. Let up a little bit on that fastball. Three and two. And Marista would be next. Phillies fans haven't had much to cheer about the first two games of the series. Stays alive at three and two does Maven. Now what Maven does in this event is going to impact the standings and pick the sticks. So I'm excited. I know you are. I can see fingers crossed on the edge of your seat. And you know Mark Sweeney, he's pacing right now because this is uh, his pick. Ball four. A point for Sweeney. That's a big point. Mm. Alexi Amarista. Inning still alive. Struck out twice and fouled out. He's glad to see Hamels back in the shower. Or at least glad to see him out of the game. Star last night with three hits, including a two run homer. Defensive indifference, there goes Maven. <laughs> Giles trying to make it nine consecutive innings without allowing a hit. So, Relief pitchers, no hitter. Maybe now at second base. And Marista trying to bring him home. And that's by the third baseman. Here comes Maven around third. Throw by Brown to the plate. Maven scores. It's five to two. And Marista delivers. Thirty-third RBI of the season for Alexi, and it's still there's <laughs> Mark Sweeney. His man Maven not only got a point for the walk, but he scores. That's another point. Hey, a great battle, and once again, straight fastball. Alexi just hitting it exactly where it was pitched. And that breaks that scoreless string of Giles at eight and two thirds innings without allowing a hit. And ten and two thirds without allowing a run. Try to get that tying run to the plate. Ninth hit for the Padres to match the Phil's total, but they bunched their hits in the fifth inning when they scored four runs on five hits. Seth Smith pinch hits for Alex Torres. Solarte on deck. He's the tying run. Strike two. Struck him out, and the ball game is over. The Phils have taken game three of this series. Final score Philadelphia 5, the Padres 2. 
Padres Live, the post-game show coming up, and here's Mike Pomerantz. Dick, thank you very much. We've seen just a couple of moments on the post-game show. We'll talk about Cole Hamels and the job that he was able to do, how he used the changeup to be so effective. The Dodgers and Giants in a race. We've got the highlights, and you'll hear from Buddy Black.